Hey guys, hope you're all good today. Recently we've seen a few examples of the session properties that we can set before running a session or a workflow. Those included fail parent if task failed, um, write compatibility log, bulk versus normal load types, save session logs for how many runs, and the pre and post SQLs. Today we'll be discussing another one of those examples which is called stop on errors. This option is found in the config object tab of the session properties. This property specifies the number of errors before which the session is stopped and failed. By default, the value is zero, but it is a good practice to set it to one. As most of the sessions are run at night when there are not many developers around, but only the support team monitoring the session runs. For example, if we have duplicate rows coming from the source, which has a primary key defined on it, the session will fail when it encounters the first duplicate row and none of the other rows will be loaded into the target. If the value of stop on errors property was set to zero, then a duplicate row will be discarded, written to the dot bad file and the rest of them would be loaded to the target. So let's take a look at an example for it now. So let's go to the workflow designer. Okay connect to the repository, password oracle, open the training folder. Okay, now this is the uh, session that we used to load data from the HR's employee table to the target, target's employee table. So, to first, let's create a new table and a primary key on the target table. So let's connect to the ODBC test one that we created earlier. Okay, we will be connecting using the username HR, the target is H password is HR as well. Okay, now let's create a new table. As we don't want to mess things up with the previous one. So create table employees underscore test as select steric from employees okay let's execute this and we can see that a table has been created so let's see what's in the table there should be one zero seven rows so select steric from employees underscore test execute this and <clears throat> scroll down and we can see yeah we have one zero seven rows so let's create a duplicate row for the employee ID 100. Insert into employees test. Select steric from employees where the employee ID is equal to 100. Yeah, let's execute this. <coughs> Okay, insert completed. Now let's see if we have the duplicate rows inserted in the source table. And if we scroll down, you can see at the end that there is a 100 employee ID row for Stephen King. Yeah, right here. Okay, now let's go connect to the target database and create a primary key constraint on the target employee table. Connect using the test one Oracle ODBC connection. Using the username target, the password as target as well. Click connect. Okay. Now let's create the primary index now. So alter table employees add. Yeah. Add primary key employee ID using the index EMP underscore IDX that we've already created so when we execute this we can see that it has already been created so now 
let's go back to the workflow manager and take a look at the stop on errors property so navigate to the config object here scroll down and you can see the stop on errors so let's set this on one first and then let's see what happens let's go to the mapping now as we've created a new table employees test we need to instead of making a new uh, mapping we can specify its username its owner name as hr over here and the source table name as employees test this is because employee and employees test ha both have the same schema so we do not need to create a new mapping for it we can use it over here so specify it as normal no pre post sqls okay now save your work <clears throat> And now let's see what happens. Let's execute this. You will be taken to the workflow monitor. Okay, here you can see that it's running now. Okay, it has failed as we expected because it has encountered a duplicate row. So let's go to the session log and see what the error was. It says here that unique constraint was violated. Now let's see what it says in the session log. Press E so that you're taken to the error Okay, database error unique constraint was violated and it tells you which row was not inserted, which row was violating this uh, unique constraint. Okay, now we can see, okay, one row was inserted in the bad file as well. It tells you which row it was. So let's take a look at the row which was inserted in the dot bad file. So go to your installation directory of Informatica. Informatica 9.6.1 Let's go to server in shared and here you have the bad files folder. So open this file and Here you can see that in one row has been inserted for the ID employee ID 100 and Stephen King and everything the row that was bad that is inserted now. So Now let's go back to the workflow manager and see what happens if we keep this as zero this uh, stop on errors property as zero so go to the config object revert this to zero click ok save your work and now let's start the workflow again it's running but it succeeded now now why has it succeeded it read 108 rows from the employee source but loaded only 107 to it this means that it also encountered an error, but it ignored it. Instead, it loaded all rest of the files, rest of the records in the target table. But it also wrote one line in the bad file. Now, as you can see that the bad file contains two rows. Bad file is always appended, not overwritten. So we have two rows now. So here you can see that setting the option of stop on errors is really important once because your jobs usually are running at night when you only have the support team to monitor the jobs they cannot fix all the errors so once you have the stop on errors option set it is very easy to track the errors and track the duplicate rows or any other errors that you encounter so in the next session we'll see um, another one of the session properties so stay with us till then thank you